We get a lot of coverage from Speed Weeks here on Speed Channel. The Advanced Discount Auto Parts 200 for the ARCA Remax Series. Part of the action live on Speed Channel today. Hello, everybody. I'm Bob Dillner. Once again, alongside of me is Ken Schrader. Lindsay Zarniak is on pit road alongside of Ray Dunlap and Don Radabaugh, who is always on the ARCA broadcast. Good to be with you here from Daytona. Action really getting kick-started with the ARCA Remax Series. We got a lot to go. We got the Dash Series tomorrow on Speed Channel. We got the Bud Shootout coming tonight on TNT. And of course, all the big qualifying and speed news and everything throughout the weekend. Right now, under caution once again for another accident on pit road. Excuse me, on the racetrack. There's not many accidents on pit road. Involving Andy Belmont and Chuck Hires. Frank Kibble is your man out front. The number seven of Clint Boyer is second. Kyle Busch third. Ryan Hemphill fourth. And Billy Venturini is fifth. And we have had two accidents right here, uh, fairly close to one another. They were all, both of them were multi car accidents, but both of them could have been substantially worse than they, they turned out being. Some pretty awesome driving, actually. I see Ron Cox on pit road. And there is the number 75 of Shane Meal. Right. Well, Bob, I'm with his crew chief, Joey Cudmore. Joey, this is a little bit of an interesting story. You guys built this race car as a Ford, but it's not like that anymore, right? Uh, we tested here in late December and uh, we weren't real happy with our test. So about three weeks ago, we cut it off and built a Chevrolet. And uh, we really appreciate DEI for supplying the motors for us. They're running really good. And uh, thank everybody at CLR for backing us. Tell me about the pit stop situation. You guys came in, did four tires just one time. You got enough gas to go. Yeah, we're good all the way to the end. Okay, Shane Meal with a good car, full of gas, got four tires, and Joey Cudmore says an awful lot of work has happened in just three weeks when they transformed that car from a Ford to a Chevrolet. You know, Schrader, we've seen these guys kind of run single file, double file, even three abreast at times, but we're getting down towards the end of the race. 57 laps complete here. When are things really going to get shaken up? Is it just at the end of the race or what? I'd say when they throw that green and tell them to start again, it's going to shake up just a little bit. And then uh, those last 10 laps is when, when things will get uh, really complicated. Frank Kimmel, he's the man on a mission, wants to win Daytona. And so do a lot of the Bush Series regulars. We're going to have NASCAR Bush Series practice live here at Daytona on Speed Channel Thursday at 9.30 a.m. One of the hot guys in this race, Kyle Busch, he'll be part of that practice session. And then again at 4 p.m. live here on Speed Channel, the NASCAR Bush Series. Pretty cool show coming up on Speed Channel this year is the NASCAR Bush Series 24-7. They're going to follow three guys around 24-7 and uh, follow everything that they do away from the track and at the track. I think everybody will find that uh, quite interesting because, uh, boy, I'm, you think those weekends are busy. Uh, sometimes the weekends are the relaxing part because you already your schedule's laid out in front of you. You know what you got to do during the weeks for the other stuff. I think Don's got some more stuff for us. Indeed, I do. In the pits of T.J. Bell involved in that accident, talked to Jeff McClure, the crew chief. They said they really didn't hurt the car. It's a little smudged up on the left front fender. They are going to take four tires and make a wedge adjustment, uh, but they don't believe they hurt the car very bad. T.J. Bell ran the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series last year. You may recall he's also a veteran of the 24 hours of Le Mans, the 24 hours of Daytona, the tw uh, 12 hours of Sebring, and I guess today the two hours of Arca Remax. But anyway, T.J. Bell is going to try to run the whole uh, season with this Brad Kent Motorsports crew. Four tires and air pressure adjustments, and they're trying to get him out of here. That's T.J. Bell. Sometimes that two hours of the Arca Remax series at Daytona is even more grueling than the 24 hours of Daytona. Well, it really is, especially when it's only 80, 80 laps in those two hours. He is away. Cool looking flames on that 08 DefiantClothing.com car. A lot of other guys on pit road as well. Ed Kennedy in the Shark Lounge car. He was also on pit road. Kind of a lull in the action here, getting ready to go green once again. And I think, as you said, when we go green again, after a couple of long cautions, it should be pretty interesting. Yeah, well, when they take the green, they're looking at uh, 21 laps to go. So 
if you're not in that lead pack, you need to you need to mosey up there and get in it if at all possible. And then you need to start positioning yourself uh, for that last 10 lap deal. You're pretty good with the map there, man. Yeah, yeah, I could. 80 laps, I'm subtracting, I couldn't even figure it out. Anyway, we're going back green again here for the Arca Remax Series, the Advanced Discount Auto Parts 200. The green flag flies, and man, Kimmel got a great start. Yeah, sometimes you don't want those great starts because it allows them other cars behind you to, to pack up, and when they come at you, they've actually got to run. So that's not always the best thing that can happen for you. And you can see Clint Boyer just behind Frank Kimmel, hooking up with Kyle Busch right now, trying to move further to the front to catch that leader. Ryan Hemphill's a guy, that fourth car in line there, the red number 77. He's got some ties to Ganassi, and that's a Braun racing car. Actually, that's an old Ganassi Cup car, but uh, Ryan Hemphill, a veteran of the late model ranks in the Pennsylvania area, a track champion at Motor Drome Speedway. And he ran the ASA Series, some uh, all-pro action in the NASCAR deal, and also the Remax Challenge Series in the past few years. Whoa, Bobby Gerhardt a little sideways, three abreast, Greg Zacks just in front. Well, you know, I, I told you, if you weren't right there in that group, you need to hurry up and get up there. I think that's what they're trying to do. <laughs> Fred Sherman also involved in there in the number 44. Recently got married, actually, just two weeks ago. Had his honeymoon in Hawaii, and they came down to the Sunshine State. Back to the lead battle, Kyle Busch on the outside. He's got it. Ryan Hemphill trying to take over third spot from Clint Boyer. But Bush just drove to the front, and he didn't, didn't look like he had much help. No, but that car, I mean, we know how strong it is, uh, has been. When he got his one-lap penalty, he came back uh, from the back through the field to the lead extremely quick. So he has been good. There's Hemphill. His entire family is here, including two of his sisters. Three abreast, possibly Shane Meal looking to the inside. It's not over yet. Clint Boyer fights back. Ryan Hemphill right there. Meal trying not to go. Wow. He pushes up. Yep. I'll tell you what. <laughs> you sound pretty tough from looking up here. Yeah, I'll tell you what. <laughs> it's, it's just, <laughs> oh. oh, this is, uh, this is plenty. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, this could be big, yep. Yeah. Okay, Boyer, his first race here at Daytona. Gerhardt goes to the inside there, but Boyer, is he a little bit nervous now? Is that why we're seeing him dance all around? No, actually, he's not nervous enough. <laughs> um, and and uh, Mio is uh, extremely loose up underneath him. Oh, man. Richard Childress, I'm sure, watching this race and just gritting his teeth and just praying. Yeah, well, it's okay. Richard had another driver for years that was just like that. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about uh, yeah, one Dale, Dale Earnhardt. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, she keeps see. getting down. See, he keeps getting down next to, to uh, Meal and keeps making him loose. And if you look at right behind Meal is Bobby Gerhardt in that number five car and uh, the Lucas Oil car. And he comes off the corner and he's just dancing all over the place too. Yeah. You see, the front of these cars are round, so they're a little different than the trucks that are basically square. When you hit people with these, you don't hit them smooth. Uh, the trucks get by with a lot more beating and banging than these do. But uh, I'll tell you what, this is what Frank Kimmel, Frank Kimmel uh, wants to look up in their mirror along with uh, Bush and, and, and see these guys doing this. Where are they? They're way out ahead. Well, that's because these guys are side by side and losing a tremendous amount of ground besides putting their themselves <laughs> Terrible danger. Oh, oh yeah. Neil yeah. really is. Yeah. It's, uh... Oh, look, Billy Venturini is in that pack, too, so he is another one of the lucky ones thanks to this side-by-side -side racing and have broken off with Kimmel and Kyle Busch. Now the spotters and the teams for that 7 and the 75 car are a little bit more relaxed being that they're not racing side-by-side -side anymore. Well, I'd say the, the, the spotters for the uh, 75. 75. The rest... The rest of them still need to be stressed up there just a little bit. <laughs> Greg Sachs, he led earlier here. He is also involved in there in that red and yellow seven number 88 car. Greg Sachs finished seventh in this race last year. Oh, you don't want to go away now because we've seen some awesome racing and there's more to come here on Speed. <laughs> 